Chapter 46 Gohan gazed around him. On the whole, the city was not entirely unlike some he'd visited on Earth, the only noticeable differences being that the technology was generally of a higher standard, and the blend of species gave the crowds a strange and varied appearance. This in particular was a good thing, Gohan had initially wondered that his orange uniform and Kuriza's disguise, long grey robes and Arco's pattern face concealing mask, which made his eyes look like eerie red dots of light under his hood, any relative of Frisia's would be sure to make a scene just by showing their face, would make them stand out, but they weren't the strangest sights on the street, not by a long shot. So, is it always this busy? Vidal asked, as a small lizard-like creature pushed its way between her and Gohan. Eh, it's a bit quiet, actually, Zarbin replied, ducking under a low-flying jet bike. I beg to differ, Gohan muttered. You say that. Zarbin gestured around them. I don't mean there's less people. Just look, everyone's just trying to get from A to B as quickly as possible. Heads down, shuffling, almost no talking. Last time I was here, there were street vendors on every corner, flashing news screens overhead, shouted conversations halfway down the street. Everyone just seems so, dull. Depressed, even. More so, even, than under Frisia. Ha! Huh. I would've thought living in Frisia's empire would be pretty depressing. You'd think so and in most places, yes. But he rarely ever came here, or sent any kind of serious garrison to occupy it or defend it. That low military presence is actually why it became such a cultural nexus in the first place. Is this Scion ruler really that much worse, I wonder? Not worse, Kariza chipped in. Just closer, more obvious. What I wonder is if the Namikian ruler on the other side of the planet is as bad as this. Hold up. Zarbin put his arm out to stop them. Don't get any closer, but something's happening up there. He indicated a spot, a hundred yards or so up the street, where a commotion was occurring. A armored figure was dragging a pair of civilians down the road, one held by the neck in each hand. Looks like we're about to see how this scion runs his territory firsthand. The tall, swaggering humanoid soldier, sporting dark gray armor and a long ponytail of muted green hair, threw the pair of citizens, a couple of blue fish-like individuals, to the ground in front of him. His jewelry clinked as he tossed his hair over his shoulder, smiling down at them. Now, he said as if talking to a small child, are you aware of the law? That thing standing between order and chaos? He was answered by silent, terrified nods. Then why, he whispered, though the street was so quiet, one collective held breath, that it was impossible not to hear him, did you feel that you were exempt from it? You know the tax rates, yet you openly, brazenly did business without giving the government its cut, honestly. He shook his head, looking disappointed. We run half the planet, protect you from harm, organize everything, and this is how you repay us. By cheating us of our hard-earned money? Please, one of the unfortunate victims squeaked. We can't afford the tax, it keeps increasing, we'll starve. Then work harder, the soldier growled, kicking the protester in the ribs to an audible crunch, he had a fairly sizable key. All of you, you're only alive thanks to the good graces of Lord Tulls, in his infinite kindness, he has elected to let you live for the time being. You are, each and every one of you, in debt to him, to wit, one life. He placed his foot on his second victim's head, applying the slightest bit of force and receiving a terrified whimper. If he demands all your money, all your property, you give it up and be happy. Happy that you're still breathing, that you can earn some more to give to him tomorrow. Understand? Another whimper. I said to you. Stop it. Silence fell. The soldier's head turned. Who said that, he demanded, stepping off his victim and stalking forwards as the crowd parted before him. Come forwards. Or I'll start blasting this crowd. There was no need for threats, a second parting appeared as Gohan stormed up to him. You leave these people alone. Ha! Huh. The soldier sniffed. What's it to you, kid? Just stop hurting them. The half-breed's eyes narrowed. Now leave before I have to do this the hard way. Ha! He hey. The man, easily twice Gohan's height, rolled his eyes. You're threatening me. This is actually, you are actually threatening me, that's good. He grinned. That's real good, kid. I don't know, maybe you aren't completely crazy, standing up to me, maybe you're some super strong mutant or warrior species, but you're looking at Lord Tull's right-hand man. The name's Days, you may have heard of me. Lone survivor of the Kabocha massacre, trust me. You don't want any of what I got. Gohan's expression didn't change. 
You can't beat me. Don't make me prove it. I don't want to start a fight, just leave. Days seemed to lose interest in Gohan, possibly due to the repetitive nature of his threats. Hey! He pointed at the pair of cowering fish people he'd been menacing a minute ago. You know what their problem is? They can't afford to eat. Too many mouths to feed. Without warning, a red energy beam shot from his pointing finger, vaporizing one of the aliens. See? Problem solved, Ak. You. Gohan, in the space of a second, had kanonied into Days, grabbing him by the shoulders and slamming him into the wall behind him, cracking the concrete. They weren't doing anything to you. They were totally defenseless. How could you do that to them? Ugh, what the, hell? Days struggled to pull out of Gohan's grip, but his efforts were futile. He threw a kick into the child's stomach, but his foot rebounded painfully with no effect. What's going on? He reached a hand up and managed to tap his scouter, but, unable to cope with Gohan's massive power level, even the newer, reinforced model exploded. No way. These things top out in the 200,000s. But, th that's, that means. He went pale, trying harder to pull away. You're a monster. How can a kid be so strong? Shut up. Gohan smacked the babbling soldier across the face with the back of his hand, the sharp blow instantly knocking him out. I'm so tired of people who break down as soon as they aren't the strongest person around. Easily carrying Days over his shoulder, he walked back out into the center of the street, dumping the unconscious oppressor on the ground. Does this happen often? he asked the assembled crowd. This violence, this killing. Nervous silence. Answer me. Is it normally like this? Nods, murmured assent. All right. He left in a burst of super speed, appearing in a back alley next to Zarbin, Kariza and Vidal. Idiot, Zarbin muttered. You drew too much attention to yourself. We should be keeping a low profile. What was I going to do, let them die? I don't know. Maybe. It might have been better to take these guys on once we have a better idea of the situation. Don't act rashly, it always leads to trouble, you can't save everybody. Zarbin. It was Vidal speaking. The alien turned, surprised to see the harshness on the girl's face. Don't talk like that. At that moment, those people were being hurt. Killed. That's a very serious matter, don't abstract it. Yeah, Kariza nodded. It's simple. You stop bad things from happening. Heroes. Zarbin groaned. I'm surrounded by altruists and bloody heroes. Why me? Sir. Amand, Tol's third in command, entered the throne room, saluting formally. Days is down. Dead? Tol's assumed, barely concerned at the loss of his most trusted subordinate. He had seemed somewhat, detached, recently, an effect that increased every time he ate a fruit from the tree. He swung between jaded and uncaring, and violent anger. But, whatever the side effects, there was no arguing with the results. True to his original aim, Tulls was now undoubtedly more powerful than Frisia, whose full power level of 120 million units was made public knowledge after certain documents were unearthed in the chaos following the fall of the Frost Demon Dynasty asterisk. Asterisk authors note, another piece of data uncovered was an approximation of King Cold's full power. It was between two and three times Frisia's. It was not anything like 10 billion. Bujin is an idiot. Don't know at this point, sir. However, before his scouter overloaded, it was trying to read a power level that it couldn't record, and those models can handle over 200,000 units. We've got a serious threat here, sir. Hmm hmm. Tull shrugged. I guess so. Play the footage. He watched impassively as Daze's scouter's video feed replayed Gohan's furious assault on his huge wall-mounted monitor, right up until Daze had tried to get an exact fix on his opponent's power level. Hmph. A scion. Are you sure? Amand asked skeptically. There are many similar-looking species to scions in the universe. Plus, I thought Tulls was the only surviving scion. Trust me. I know my race when I see them, the renegade scion said quietly. I wonder if I could recruit this one, hold on a second. Rewind. Amon did so, almost reaching the beginning of the footage. Keep going, keep going, there. Look. Back left, ducking into the alley. Zoom in. Sir. Who is it? Amon asked, perplexed, the muscular brute of Tull's squad, he was not accustomed to thinking too much, that was usually Daze's role. Not sure. 
but he's familiar. Tulls tapped his forehead. Run a face match or something. See if it's somebody on file. Ah. Uh. Amon tentatively tried a button on the console, and by luck more than anything else activated the face match software, running the image by the planet's database. Twelve seconds later, blinking red letters appeared on screen as a file from the database opened. Facial recognition confirmed, 95% match. Tull smiled. Ah, Zarbin, you didn't die in that Namek debacle, then, the famous Zarbin and some mysterious scion, running around on my planet. This just got interesting. Right as the tree is about to ripen again, no less. You're really doing this? Yes. Gohan nodded. You're actually going to. Zarbin. This government isn't fit to rule. You've seen that already. You're ridiculous. We haven't been here an hour. Just follow my lead. Or wait back at the ship. Up to you. Zarbin rolled his eyes. I don't believe this. I've worked for Frisia. I know about irrational decisions, but you're right up there with him. So you're coming? Yes. He sighed. I can't let you run off alone. The things I do for that infernal woman, more trouble than she's worth. You don't really think that, Carissa said. I don't really think that, Zarbin admitted. Tulls. Lord Tulls. Amon skidded into the throne room. He's, they're here. The Scion Kid, Zarbin, and a couple others. Already? Tulls shook his head, clearing his thoughts. Shame, it's too early to go out, really. It's, almost evening, sir. Right. Tulls almost didn't seem to hear him. Well. Get Cacao. And, Razin, Lakasii, was that their names? Sorry, sir. Amon stammered, not having realized Tulls would forget so easily. We lost Razin and Lakasii, remember, sir? The incident on Iconda? Right, right. In that case, meet them. Get cacao. I'll be out soon. He stood up, stretching. So much work, it's all so much, work. Gohan threw Deza's body on the ground in front of him, smashing open the great stone gates with a wave of his hand. Tull's palace lay beyond, originally constructed in anticipation of a visit from Frisia, back in his day, it was a labyrinthian, gothic construction, towering spires and gargoyles adorning every crevice. Gohan indicated the unconscious soldier. Is this yours? he called out. Not anymore. Twin blasts of energy shot from the right and left, and Gohan jumped to intercept as they sped straight for Daze's prone form. This time, the half-scion was prepared for treachery, and he caught both beams, deflecting them harmlessly. You can come out now, he said. I knew you were low, but that was despicable. He's your own comrade. Being defeated like that? He might as well already be dead. You should have killed him when you beat him, said the soldier approaching from Gohan's left. Amand was thick-set, red-skinned, and bore a scar down the left side of his face. His armor was heavily customized, adorned with baggy sashes and flashes of color. I won't murder someone just because they're weaker than me, Gohan insisted. Logic error, the soldier to Gohan's right word. Basic strategy indicates a dead enemy cannot recover and counterattack. Yet you spared him. This was an incorrect action. Perhaps your cogitation system is faulty. Cacao was a large, intimidating construct of gleaming metal, seemingly molded from great smooth plates of a steel-like substance, with little evidence on the surface of wiring or internal mechanisms. Where's Tulls? Gohan asked calmly, but no response came. So let me guess. We have to go through you first. That's about it, Amand replied, cracking his knuckles. Don't bother with that, you go find Tulls. I'll take the big guy, Kuriza declared. I'll get the robot, then. Zarbin entered a fighting stance. Go on ahead, Gohan. We've got this. Right. Thanks, guys. Uh, Videl. She nodded. I'll watch your back. All right. Gohan turned to face the end race. Let's go. Raditz lay in the afterlife's long grass, idly chewing a stalk of it. He liked coming out here sometimes, to be alone, in the middle of this peaceful train of thought, King Kai came hopping up, shattering the silence. Hey, Raditz. Raditz. Guess what? Raditz sighed, standing up in a leisurely fashion, before stretching and yawning like a disturbed cat. What? You've got an audience with the Grand Kai. He says he'll see you. 
Do you know what this means? He's the greatest fighting master in the afterlife. Finally, somebody who can keep up with you. Huh? Raditz, rubbing his eyes, began to pay attention. Oh yeah, I remember. That's good. Well, I can sense five Kai energies around here, I guess that'll be the four Kais like you and the Grand One. He'll be the biggest power, right? Well, yes, but don't just go instant transmission off and leave me here, the Northern Kai's words were wasted, however, as Raditz did exactly that. The Grand Kai was not what you'd expect from the ruler of the gods of all four galaxies. He wore blue jeans and a faded denim jacket, topped off with square-lensed sunglasses that contrasted his extravagant white beard and mustache combination. As Raditz arrived, he was crouched over his boombox, trying to repair it. Aff, this damn thing. Uh. Raditz looked around what appeared to be the supreme deity's residence, an ornate palace quite at odds with its occupant. Grand, Kai. Huh. The Grand Kai looked up, overcoming his surprise at his suddenly appearing visitor. Oh yeah, that's me. Who's asking? I'm Raditz, the scion replied. King Kai, uh, I mean, North Kai, told me you'd agree to train me when you heard I'd beaten Pickin, and, well, I've kind of run out of challenging sparring partners and teachers, ha. Huh? Casual laughter hadn't always been like him, but the afterlife had lightened him up, giving him a more easygoing view on life, death? Oh, yeah, I remember now. Grand Kai nodded. Well, all right. This thing, he kicked the faulty boombox for emphasis, isn't behaving, so I guess there's no time like the present, eh? Sounds good to me. All right, son. Grand Kai and Raditz stood hovering in the air in a huge round chamber, hundreds of miles across, which had been enchanted to hold dozens of miniature star systems, complete with house-sized stars and car-sized planets. It's been a while since I've done some serious training or fighting, so let's just see what you've got, to start off with. I haven't been paying as much attention as I should have, I think, I wish I at least remembered how strong Pickin was, so I'd have some kind of expectation of what this one would be like, who knows, maybe he almost measures up to me. Okay. Raditz took in a deep breath. So just power up to maximum. That's about it. Go ahead and transform if you can, I need to see your best. Right. Gish. Kkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkk
turned his whole life around, saved more people than he ever killed. Went out saving his brother, and his adopted planet. I see. Why are you telling me this? Well, that Z-sword of yours. What of it? You told me only a truly heroic individual could wield it. And no one's yet been strong enough, not even you. You're not suggesting this mortal is superior to me, surely. I don't know. I've never seen you at full power. Just, take my word for it. This one's different, all right? I'll consider it. For now, I must depart. Duty calls. You still on that witch hunt? Wizard, actually. But yes. I must find Babidi soon. He must not succeed. I understand. Good luck. The connection broke, and Grand Kai ambled back over to his bed, slumping on it lazily. Well, I had been thinking, recently that I wanted something, interesting to happen around here, I guess I got what I asked for. What are we gonna do with you, Raditz?